Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Kenny Lamons here with Medicare Millennials, where we are taking you along on our journey to building a large, successful Medicare book of business year-round. And today, I want to tell you guys about five SEPs that every Medicare agent needs to be familiar with so that you're taking advantage of every opportunity when you meet with the prospect to help put them in the best position and gain a new customer to add to your book of business. Um, so... If you guys like our content, you know, please subscribe to our videos, give it a thumbs up, put comments below, but also just know that we do um, invite you to partner with our FMO and kind of join the Medicare Millennials as coaches and mentors to help you along in your journey. For more information, re reach out to us at MedicareMillennials.com or even if you're happy with your current upline, uh, but you would like to just learn a little bit more about uh, what Ethan and I specialize in our particular system, we do have some courses, virtual courses that we sell as well. So I don't want this video to be too long and I am going to like ma make a short disclaimer here that, you know, this, that I am not CMS, um, you know, I'm not reading these SCPs verbatim for the most part from the Medicare or the CMS website. So I just encourage, I want to educate you about them in general and I encourage you to go do your legwork, write them down and go learn uh, directly from the horse's mouth what these SCPs mean how they how you can use them properly and compliantly uh, but just know that they're all super useful and things that you need to learn about as a new medicare agent okay so first and foremost is five star so medicare has a star rating system just to help consumers navigate hey which plans according to cms are kind of living up to, to the standards or exceeding standards or which ones you know, really aren't living up to CMS standards. Now you're gonna need to, you'll have to do your own research on what, how exactly CMS determines these star ratings, but here's how it's practically applicable to you. If a plan in a service area that you service has a five star rating with Medicare, it allows people to make a, once a year, they can make an election to move to one of those five star plans whether there are even if they're already in a medicare advantage plan maybe they're on original medicare only yes they can still make use of this five star election once a year moving to this five star rated plan so it's really awesome if you do your research in your area and let's say that you're working your two counties where the county that you live and one or two counties surrounding it but you find out that two counties over that you've never worked in has a five-star plan that's really popular and it has that five-star rating it may be worth your time to consider marketing in that area sometimes if you partner with that five-star plan they send out marketing compliant marketing directly specifically about their five-star plan and you may be able to partner with them to put your information on that um on that approved five-star marketing or if you just run across people through referrals or business reply cards that just so happen to maybe uh be it might be a better fit with that five-star plan then you can make use of that election so that's the first one five star uh these this is one but it's also two so if somebody has medicaid extra help lis any of those kind of uh, subsidized uh, low-income uh, programs there's actually two scps related to this one of them is dual SE, extra help LIS maintaining. So that just simply means that they, they have had extra help or something like that and they continue to have it. So in that scenario, once per quarter, the first three quarters of the year anyway, they have the opportunity to go from one Medicare Advantage plan to another, okay? If, or one prescription drug plan to another. If they're gaining or, but another SCP that's a little bit different is the extra help LIS gaining or losing. And in that case, they have a little bit more flexibility on, on what they can do. Um, so I'm kind of two birds with one stone. These are a little bit different, whether you're maintaining or if you're losing or gaining extra help. But nonetheless, it gives once per quarter, the first three quarters of the year, doesn't have to be Medicaid. They may not qualify for Medicaid. Maybe they just qualify for the extra help program with prescription drugs. That SCP is available for those folks, whether they're, they've they always had extra help or they're just gaining it or losing it once per quarter. Super, super important for selling year round. So do your research on, on those two. So the fourth ones, we kind of did two and three right there. The fourth one is something called the, like the chronic SCP is what we call it. And essentially there are special needs plans 
that are not necessarily for the dual market or those with Medicare and Medicaid. There are actually, in various parts of the country, special needs plans that are for chronic conditions. So a carrier may put out a plan that is specifically meant to help people with diabetes or a chronic heart condition or some type of lung conditions like COPD and emphysema. And if that client, that prospect that you're speaking with, has one of these chronic conditions that the plan covers, that creates a special election period for them if it's the right fit for them to move into one of those plans and that's year round, okay? So that's the chronic SCP. Two things you wanna do there, go check out the specifics of how that SCP works through on CMS, on the Medicare website. And then also do your due diligence with the carriers that you offer and find out from your carrier reps if they have any chronic plans that you can take advantage of. And then the fifth one is just moving out of a service area. This one is something I learned uh, recently. So a couple of things, you move, a prospect moves to a new address that isn't in their planned service area. So of course that one I always knew about. A little bit on that, if they, they usually have two full months after they move. And actually if they notify their plan before their move, they get the month before they move and two full months after they move to select a new Medicare Advantage plan or a new prescription drug plan if they're going PDP to PDP. So that one's big, especially where I live in the DFW area. We've got a lot of um, people moving in from out of state. So if I meet somebody and they're like, yeah, I moved here, you know, 32 days ago, they may still be in need of taking advantage of that SEP. They may still be on their old plan from another state, or maybe they just moved from one county to another. But the moving SEP, believe it or not, you'll use it fairly frequently. So go get familiar with that SEP. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Um, again, this wasn't meant to be like an in-depth education on exactly how every SCP works, but just to introduce you to these tools that you need to become familiar with as a Medicare agent to, to take every opportunity that you can to help a prospect get in the best position that they can be in so we can do what? Build a large, successful Medicare book of business. Hope this was helpful, guys. You have a great day. Hope you like and subscribe.